Good afternoon and uh, welcome. My name is Susanne Franco. I am professor in dance, theater, and performance studies at Kafkowska University. And I'm also director delegate for the theater activities in this university. And uh, it is a great pleasure to host this event in the frame of the Anthropocene campus in Venice and to reopen this theater today for the first time after the start of the pandemic. And in this very occasion, uh, it was the marvelous way to start again. Um, after this long break, we also became more aware uh, of the role and the importance of theater spaces in our cities. And today, we will inquire more and further uh, the role of the urban spaces and the identity of, of our cities. So now it is uh, my pleasure to introduce you to Professor Cristina Baldacci, who is Associate Professor at Kafoskari for con in Contemporary Art. Uh, those who are sit here knows her very well, but I'm saying this for the people uh, the spectators today connected from remote. And she's also the co-organizer of this Venetian part of the Anthropocene campus. And uh, let me just introduce you also to my next uh, uh, colleagues, uh, colleague, uh, Miriam De Rosa, who is Associate Professor in Film and Media Studies at Kafoskari, who will moderate uh, today the dialogue and the QA, uh, QA uh, um, session, and also introduce you to our guests, Ila Bica and Louise Lemoine. Uh, unfortunately, Louise is, uh, uh, is not with us this afternoon and uh, was unable to join us, but now I leave you the floor is yours, and thank you for introducing the guests. Thank you so much, Susanne. Uh, I would say that we are really happy and thrilled about today also because, uh, not only because we are all colleagues and friends, uh, but also because this is the first time that, as you said, Susanne, uh, this beautiful theater uh, at Cafe Oscari is opening again and we are very happy that the first um, film, movie, uh, that is, um, well, not movie, film, uh, that is uh, projected is uh, Beacon Le Bois film about Venice. So uh, why a film about Venice and about uh, water in Venice? Of course, because of the floods, but uh, also because of the Anthropocene Campus Venice. For those who uh, don't know yet, um, if there are still people who don't know about the Anthropocene Campus who are following us, uh, the Anthropocene Campus is a one-week educational event that started on Monday, and so we are almost there. Today is uh, almost our last day. Um, at least uh, with today, we are closing the public program uh, of the campus, uh, and uh, so the talk, the screening and talk with BKLM1 is our last artist talk, um, and, um, and after that we will, ho we will have also, or we will host also a keynote, the last keynote of the campus, um, so um, I invite you also to join us for the last keynote. Um, which will begin at six, so after the talk and the screening. Um, what about, I will just introduce a little bit the campus, the Anthropocene Campus Venice is, um, so the main theme, and this is also why it's uh, connected to Beacon Lemoine's film, um, is a campus about uh, the politics of water in the Anthropocene, um, this series of events and artist talk is also uh, framed or in the framework of uh, one of the seminars of the campus, Seminar 3, uh, which was about, or the title of Seminar 3 um, is Aquaphobia and Be Beyond uh, the Water Politics of um, Representation. And this has a lot to do with Beacon Lemoine's film. 
of course, but uh, it's not only about the fear of water, the floods in Venice, uh, is also, as Vic and Lemoine's film will show us, about how uh, get to live with the floods, get to live with the, with the water, with the high tide. So how, uh, of course, the high tide changes uh, also the, not just the, the water system, the city or the city system, but also the social system uh, in Venice. Uh, and how people get, are used also to deal with high tide. So I think um, I will give now Miriam the floor. So thank you a lot. And thanks also to our um, partners, um, the HKW, the Haus der Kultur in der Welt, and the Max uh, Planck Institute um, for uh, organizing this event with us. Um, the Anthropocene Campus Venice is uh, set in the framework of a um, long-term research project, uh, the Anthropocene Curriculum. So we are part of it and we are very happy to be part of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you all for being here. Thanks. I think I, I can use this, this microphone. Do you hear, hear me, right? Okay. All right. So uh, welcome from my end as well. Um, I think I will just move back to very trivial indications before getting to the heart of our conversation, because I'm left with a little bit of housekeeping as well. Uh, so obviously for those that are in the theater, uh, emergency exits on your left, uh, lavatories at the back, and obviously um, please be mindful, uh, keep social distancing and masks on. Okay, this is done. Sorry, I had to. <laughs> um, so you'll have the chance to participate in the Q&A that will follow the, the screening. And of course, there is the chance for those that are connected on Zoom as well to use the chat box. So type in your questions, comments, suggestions, anything uh, that you feel sharing after the, uh, the film. All right, so now that the most practical aspects are sorted, um, let me just thank uh, uh, again everyone who made this screening possible, obviously the organizers of the Anthropocene Campus, Susanne Franco for the having us at the Teatro Caposca di Santa Marta, many, many thanks to Cristiano Colleoni, Luca Petrini and all the technical staff. Uh, and without further ado, then it's with genuine pleasure um, that I am introducing our guest today. Um, there is just Ila Vika with us uh, for, you know, on behalf of the two of you. Um, all right, uh, Vika and Lemoine are very difficult special guests to introduce as they are many things at once. So I was, you know, trying to find and research the best way to do this, but I just stumbled upon this difficulty because they are an artistic duo active as of some 15 years on the international architectural scene. Her complete work, which in 2016 has been acquired by the MoMA in New York City um, for its permanent collection, comprises approximately 20 films, including two film series. This work combines an inquisitive and delicate uh, attitude and mirror in a rather virtuous way uh, Luisa and Ila's backgrounds that are respectively based on art history, cinema and architecture. The result is a widely acclaimed production that interrogates the space we live in from an internal perspective, close to places and imbued in places. So uh, in your portfolio, you describe the series in, of which the film we're going to watch today as part um, of uh, something located in between visual anthropology and observational cinema. Uh, that is very true, uh, but the most poignant definition that uh, of what you do that I could find, to me, is very much connected to the seminar uh, that uh, Vekel and Lemoine are teaching at the AA School of Architecture in London, uh, which is called Sensitive Observation Seminar Series. So this idea of being sensitive and being observational, it's very, very good and, and sort of um, remind us of the sensitive receptive attitude and the inclination to observe that is at the center of this cinema. So that's a good summarized way to talk about this film. And of course, this tells us not only about this attitude, but also about the fact that our guests have been holding a, a host of different teaching positions in prestigious higher education institutions. And furthermore, 
uh, they also act as their own producers um, through Beck and Partners, which is an independent film production publishing and distribution company. On top of this, Beck and Lemoine are the most competent and generous guests we could hope to, to have on the occasion of the first event at the Theatre. So really many thanks for accepting our invitation. Right, so we already heard a couple of things um, about the film, so I won't take more time on that. I'm just probably saying that the film we're about to watch is a feature length documentary uh, that is part of 10 film series Homo Urbanos. Each film is devoted to the life in a specific city, ranging from Doha to Rabat, Naples to Tokyo, Bogota, and of course, Venice. So I will now leave you to Omur Banos Venezianos, and we will have the chance to discuss um, after the film straight away. Thank you. Dantis, Dantis, Okula Dantis, Sikol Teman, Biuma Teman, Akal Teman, Otadawuk Bil Mejan. صيحة جمالك تكتمل في أسنانك أسنان أفضل لحياة أفضل اليوم بلا طبيب بلا تيتات خاش قول ورزازات ورزازات أي 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 خبر أجل
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I have the light right in <laughs> my eyes. But thank you very much to invite us and to show the film. That's, that's really great. So um, just maybe um, a nice break uh, to get things going while our audience sort of gets back to maybe their thoughts and notes. Um, how did you choose the cities for your series? Um, because obviously this focus was very Venetian, but as we said, it's part of a larger series. Yes, it's part of ten other, nine other cities, ten, mm -hmm. a series of ten films, about ten cities. And we chose the, the cities uh, as, uh, not as we wanted to do, <laughs> but we had to choose some cities. We wanted to have some cities in different cultures, in different places in the world, right. but we couldn't, for example, film here. Uh, in, in India or in Africa, but we are going to do, I, I hope, very soon. But uh, it's also a problem of production, so mm -hmm. as it's a very low budget film, we have to adapt ourselves to some trips that we are we were doing or, or something. The first five film was a commission by a, a Biennale, mm -hmm. Agora, in, in Bordeaux, in France. Yeah. So they asked us to work on some cities and uh, we changed, uh, we, and this was the, the first, uh, we arrived in September, so this was in November, so this was just for our arrival. It's a great yeah. welcome. Yeah, <laughs> it's a welcome, yeah, welcome in Venice. But I, I know Venice very well because I studied here, but uh, yeah, it was uh, yeah. welcome. No, that's that. great, that, that's really great. And I was sort of, you know, taking the opportunity to, to, um, to mention the other films because for, you know, for the people that um, are part of the Anthropocene campus, there are so many different aspects in these series that might be of your interest, even though obviously with the specificities of, of um, each cities. Um, yeah, so I don't know whether maybe you wanted to ask something, Susanne, or if, if is there any questions, pressing questions from the audience? Otherwise, I have like a ton of questions that I would like to ask myself. Um, I would have one, probably more. Um, when I first watched the film, I was uh, attracted by the performative aspect mm. of the urban architecture, of course, which is the mm. current and um, the common feature of all the series. And here, especially, what attracted the att attention is also the way urban architecture impacts the way we use our bodies mm. and, and the way we move. And walking here is, is really central. Um, and as a Venetian, I can say that for me, the, we're not the grumpy looking one, <laughs> not the Venetian, <laughs> rather those who really master a completely different uh, walking technique, which comes from the exposure to this phenomena. This was extreme, but even with a lower high tide, you simply need to walk differently. And, and Venetian master the speed and the distance and these two parameters goes together and it brings you to live in a city where these parameters lead you in connecting to the other very much now that the tourism increased so much you don't only have other venetians who embody these behavioral codes in the city but you face other people walking not properly mm -hmm. for this condition and now that I re-watched the film after this pandemic that made us very sensible of proprioception and the, the, the sharing a space and the new codes, I was, uh, I, I was almost impressed by the choreographic structure of the film. And I would say, metaphorically, it almost suggest, uh, suggests to hope for a new choreographic vision probably for our sharing social spaces and urban spaces because we have to cope with big enormous challenges water will be higher and higher probably the mose will protect us for a, a little while but not forever yeah I, yeah absolutely I, I agree it's a big choreography but uh, venice in general is uh, all the time is big choreography but uh, we started to make these films uh, I would say maybe we started to make films about uh, space and architecture just to 
to understand better how we, um, we how, how is the the relationship between our body and the space, and, and so also between uh, our body and the other bodies that we are uh, when we share a space. This in general in architecture, but uh, this is very interesting in the city, for example. So all the ten films about the series, they are um, the, the big topic is this one: how we share the space with the other. So sharing a space uh, is uh, how you read your body uh, with the other so how you move how you you have to uh, to to learn how to move and this is something that we learn from we are very young from kids the kids we we teach to our kids how to 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 to, um, to behave in a, in a place with other people and in a space also no in in, in a urban environment for example you you have to know what you can do and what you cannot do and uh, and this create a kind of uh, movement of your body and the movement of your body is is as you say totally different uh, in uh, in different cities and this is very interesting for us making this film because we can understand how do people also move how, what what kind of choreography do you have uh, related to this uh, different uh, urban environment and also different culture also because the, as you, you you know if uh, there's some culture what you, you cannot approach the others other people on your body, so you have to be very, very distant. And other cultures, like in, in Italy, for example, you can stay very, very close to the people. And uh, I know because I have, uh, even for, there's a little different even between, because I live for, for a long time in France, but even in France, you cannot stay so close to the people because they, they, they ask what, and in, also uh, in the US, this is really complicated to stay very close, That's to take your, the distance. So. This is uh, related to the culture, and also what is interesting in this film is related to the to the city. But the city changes totally with the with the water, and the water totally changes also the choreography. And uh, uh, and you can see it as is a city, total touristic city. You can see it. This with, you can find all these different behaviors in all the people that are coming in Venice. So as you say. You 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 know that uh, that that one is a Venetian because he knows how to 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 work how, how to behave to to leave the place to the other to pass and that, and all these kind of things and other other people the tourists for example even without the water they 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 just walk and uh, they don't leave the space uh, for for the other so it's it's, it's completely different. What is interesting in uh, in the water is that the, the the water slow down every everything. So the the rhythm is very is very is very slow. So you have to go very slow. And uh, in 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 uh, in a sense, the city is uh, much more calm. No, it's a it's a it's a not when it's raining, but uh, when it's not raining, it's very really a, a peaceful. But also for the sound, because the water changes changes the, the sound also totally. No. Everything is more, more like like this. So in this case, it's really interesting how uh, something like uh, an event and atmospherical event uh, can, can totally change the perception of the space of the of the of, of, of the of the of the urban environment of the, of the city. This is absolutely very interesting for us because uh, we, we also we we made a film in Bogota. In Bogota, every day. Uh, almost uh, for the for the uh, the, the, the year uh, the whole year every day there's a moment that it's raining very 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 hard and uh, and 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 the people change absolutely there also change totally the the relations with the city so as you you can see it here the, uh, people they they know how to uh, people from uh, Venetian for example they know very well how to how to to be able with the with the water? No, they have some. Uh, uh, they they know they they, they can uh, they they take they can even take advantage of the, of the water. What I'm watching I'm watching uh, now this film for another time. I, I see that uh, in 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 at the end uh, what we see is a big show. No, it's a, it's it's a, it's an incredible Venice is an incredible show that the show must go on. No, it never stops. So you can uh, you can have a city totally flooded by 
water one one meter high, but everything go uh, go and 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 what what is important is also that uh, you have to keep the tourist because the tourist is the is the is the um, is is Venice is the tourism so everything and nothing changes nothing changes you just have to find to adapt yourself to find a solution and and like the the man that is drinking his spritz. It, everything is like uh, no, it's normal. This is uh, totally normal. So this yeah. is uh, something extremely interesting. Is the what is important is the show, is the spectacle. No, well, let's uh, let's go on. And the tourists, you 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 see that what they uh, it's, it's, it's uh, the man with the suitcase in in the water. So that's something. Uh, if you take a little bit of things, it's, it's horrible. No, it's a uh, if you, <laughs> you how can we. I don't know how, how we can uh, how the city can uh, can uh, accept that the tourist yeah. um, uh, um, I would say um, yeah being in the middle of this tragedy yeah, but that's uh, very dramatic at it's, times it's, yeah it's, uh, there are some, some a, episodes some dramatic. people that are like falling in the water or yeah. just, just not being able to move and navigate so it's mm. quite challenging <laughs> <laughs> But it's a big dance, I think. Also, it's a really a performance, but it's yeah. a, kind, a kind of dance, no? Yeah. Yeah, you have to. No. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Is there? A, okay. I see there are two questions. So, if we can get the mic passed on in the room, please. Or you can maybe just get here. join us. Get here, and there is better, one maybe, mic opened yeah. here. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. I wanted to ask about the role of humor, um, which in some <laughs> environmental worlds is um, <laughs> forbidden, or or because there's a high level of seriousness about it, um, which can be cloying, right? That sense that there can never be a, a range of emotional responses to to these enormous and en events. Um, on the other hand, there are moments where you see, especially the selfies and um, Sorry, the, the 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 sort of tourist spectacles, which are sort of funny. I, I guess I would just love to hear you talk a little bit about how you think about the role of humor in um, what how we face um, intense environmental difficulties, like what happened in the in the particular moment in Venice's history that you captured in your film. Yeah, the hum humor. Yeah, I, I couldn't hear very well, but uh, it's it's uh, it's like uh, every tragedy. There's a lot of comic inside the tragedy, so it's much more tragic when you underline the, the comic way, the comic side of the of all of this. So it's obvious that, uh, as I, I said, it's a big show, so everything is uh, for for the tourist until the moment that is really becoming unbearable, impossible, but until there, that is, mo for me, it's, uh, it's the moment when the evaporator arrives, no one, <laughs> that everyone is tired of, about the yeah. spectacle, the show, so the show, let, let, just leave me to go back to my house and just finish, but until then, everything is one fantastic for a new selfie or for take advantage of the show because i'm i'm living i'm uh, experiencing something extremely uh um, exceptional it's totally exceptional because i'm in an exceptional city that is an incredible dead city so normally i take some picture of me because now it's very important to take a picture of yourself and not of the city this city is the background, so that's the show because you are you know, on a scene. You need the background, and the background is the city. But then in that moment, it's much more than the background. Is the every everywhere is much more uh, augmented. No, is the the this, this show is the, as is best, and so even in the impossible moment, they have, all the people have water on the on the boots, but 
it's not a problem because what the, what is the problem is just to to show to other people what you are living you know so it's going to it's going yeah it's like going to in a uh, amusement park yeah. it's, it's a very big amusement park and uh, what is uh, interesting for me is that uh, what is behind all this machine no because we are Venice is a big is a big machine that works for 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 tourists for giving for giving to the amusement park uh, uh, for for the tourists. But uh, even in that moment, we have to work for the for this. So let's try to find a solution. And uh, and uh, the adaptation is in, is is enormous. It's a normal adaptation just to to go to go and. Uh, to, to, to not to close the amusement park. We do not have to close. We could, could not close. And this is also a question for the future because uh, I don't know if this will be, will be the future. I hope not, but uh, we are talking about the Anthropocene, so this is interesting. If, uh, what, is, what, will, what will happen if one day this will be the, the, the normality? No, that's, uh, this is really interesting. Is, it, is it this a test for a new, yeah. very, very, very near future? I, I don't know. But uh, what we can see in here is that even if this will be the new future, the new future will be a, a much more amusement park, more, more than today. Can just chip in super quickly before the, the next, um, you know, um, this, this reminds me of your Doha film in the series, where there is a literally fake Venice that, you know, in the sort of, you know, Las Vegas fashion, for instance, and that is, you know, the epitome of the amusement park kind of thing. So obviously, as you say, the guy is sipping his spritz with this flair, very calm, and just possibly, you know, taking a picture every once in a while to see, you know, the, the tourists running or just caught in the middle of the mess. It's kind of very, very explicit, and, and it's a great example of this, this sort of, you know, show must go on sort of attitude and just doing every effort possible to keep things going. So there's a lot to think about in that, and, and you wittily underline that, so I think that, that worked really well. Sorry, please. Hi, thanks very much for sharing your film, I really enjoyed it. Um, one of the funniest moments, most striking moments in the film, to pick up on the concept of humour, is um, when the tourist, I think he's a tourist, falls in the canal and one of the guys on the boat someone says, oh, he didn't see the water. And you just think, oh, this is ridiculous, the water is everywhere. It's totally ridiculous, you yeah. didn't see the water. Yeah. And yeah, I, got, I sort of thought, and I hope, I, hope, I hope I'm not overthinking this too much, is that the relationship between water and vision is, is really rich and, and complex. And thinking about Venice as a spectacle, it's long been part of the idea of Venice as a spectacle. Uh, you know, it reflects light, it distorts it, it has varying levels of, of transparency and, and opacity. So I guess I was, I was wondering how you as filmmakers thought about that relationship with, with water as a kind of something you were working with, almost part of the, the cinematographic process. Yeah, it's com thank you for your very complicated question. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. I know, I know for example, when, when we, we, are, we film water in this case, for example, or I, I told you also in, 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 uh, in Bogota, and uh, the, the water is uh, the presence of the water that, uh, what, what is interesting when the water can change the behavior, what this is very interesting. And, uh, it can change the behavior in different ways, as here is so explicit, so you can understand it very well. But uh, when you have a, a relationship with the water, you you I can say uh, is is is, uh, is something that uh, the, the water is a natural uh, element, and they so strong. So when uh, you are related to a natural element like uh, like water in the city, is one uh, we, we can say that in the city is uh, there's no a lot of uh, natural elements because we it's a mineral uh, environment. So we create uh, everything, but uh, we keep some little uh, like say like reminders of the, the nature and. Uh, 
like the trees or like the parks. So, so we have parks because we have to to underline our relationship to the nature that you you can find that uh, anywhere else uh, in the city. But the water is interesting because the water is from the beginning. Uh, of the, the 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 creation of cities, uh, the water was very important for for a city because of the transport and everything. So I was I think also about Kyoto, for example, we made a film in Kyoto, and uh, Kyoto is extremely uh, there's a, a good, a very um, strong relation to the nature because there's a, some forest uh, all around. But in in the middle of the city is a really cement everywhere. But there's a, there's, a, there's a river, and, the, and people go there, and we made the film, uh, uh, almost all the film is shot on this part of the river in Kyoto, because when you go there, you, you change totally the, 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 your behavior. It's, not, it's like a, to be a different one, so you, you, you can live in, in a... In, uh, we made also a film in, in Bordeaux that is always the same, it's because uh, when you are in, in the middle of the city, is a, is an active life if you want, but when you go uh, on the border of the of the, the river, this is a slow down everything. So the water, I can I would say that the water has this power to really create a different rhythm of the city. It's very and for that it's very important. And also the reason why we put some uh, la little lakes in the park with the, with the water because uh, it's a moment. Uh, it's uh, it's a kind of, it's. It's like communicate that uh, here you can stay, you can slow down, you can uh, you can behave totally different. But when you go uh, back to the city, you will you will start to be efficient, like you were you were you, you were before. So it's a uh, the the presence of the water when uh, is uh, the, uh, as you say like uh, in this case design is a uh, is a kind of communication i would say we use the water to to change the the, the rhythm of the city but when the water also is uh, is arriving from the sky and uh, or, or from the sea like in here it it happens in a, in a different way but it happens the same fa the same thing that slow, it's not only slowing, but it's changing. It's changing the rhythm of the city. So everything is totally different. And the, the, the references that you have in a city with a lot of water when it's raining or in layers are totally different. So you have to adapt in a, a completely in another way to the to the to to to, to the others or the other people. This is interesting because uh, you become a little bit more vulnerable. No, it's the uh, it's uh, when you normally you can you know how to behave in your city. You know how to I, I take this, I go, I take a car, I take a bus. I do so. Everything is really totally efficient. But I I live for example. I was thinking about Rome. I, I live five years in Rome, and in Rome it's a catastrophe for for the for, for to, be, to 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 travel to the transport. But when you, when it's raining in Rome, it's a nightmare. So it's uh, everything is changing. You can you cannot you can move. You 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 don't know how to what to do because and it's just raining. It's uh, the rain, but it's a uh, it's a uh, some some uh, God event, no? That is <laughs> sending the the water and and uh, we 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 change totally, no? So when it's raining, we don't know how to to do it. Uh, maybe it's uh, what is interesting in in water in this uh, about your question is this that uh, it it, uh, is, it, it changed the references that we have on the city life, and this is when uh, when it happens also in Bogota for example, yeah you you see that uh, I, for, I I can answer with a little exa example. In, uh, I was in Bogota, uh, and, and in Bogota some people told me you you, you don't go there. To film because it's too dangerous. So stay until this street in Bogota. The streets have, have number, so they say um, stay until the, the number twelve, but don't go on the first thirteen because it, there is too dangerous. So I, I went to the twelve <laughs> to watch the other street, and I, I, I obviously it was much more interesting on the other side than the where where I was, but. All the, all the people told me, and it's a quite dangerous city, they told me, don't go there, don't go there. So I, I wanted to go but with my camera, but uh, I couldn't go. So 
I, I, I didn't know what to do. And at, at that moment, it started raining very, very hard. So a lot, a lot of uh, water coming from the sky. And there, in that moment, I decided to go. I decided to go, and so I filmed. There's a big part of the film about in Bogota. Is under the under the rain in this uh, in this uh, in a neighborhood that is extremely dangerous. But I was I was not scared because I I knew that with the rain, every everybody was different. So they they didn't have the time to attack me because they they were thinking other things. But it's not only shield. for that. Sorry. It's a magic shield. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's every the, the 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 references are different. So normally, if you attack someone, but it's raining, you say well, maybe maybe later. I don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't I don't I don't do it now. Maybe <laughs> later because. Because there's a difference, no? Yeah. Because uh, there's a difference in the atmosphere. Yeah. Everything changed, so so I could uh, I could film. And uh, when the, it, it it was finishing to, to the raining, there's a lady that uh, came to me and say, you know, you this is extremely dangerous. You have to leave now. You have to leave now because it was finishing. It's, uh, the rain was uh, was uh, was at the end, no? So this, the 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 moment is not now. Yeah. That's great. That's that's really great. So basically, water as as a driver for change that sort of stops what's happening generally. That sort of subverts the kind of balances. At the same time, I was thinking when you were when you were talking as a film theory person, that water is a lens, mm. right? That's that's why you see things differently. Yeah, yeah. There are a couple of sequences where you show like objects that went lost during you know the flood through water, yeah. and they look different. Yeah, sure. The way they move look different. They sort of float very gently. There is like a, a mask, typical mask, floating very gently, and that is very much you know yeah, sort of impact on the time. You also. even look more because the, yeah. normally the the. The rats, you don't see the rats. No? <laughs> you know <laughs> that, that there's a lot of rats in, in the city, but you normally you don't see them. And that, yeah, and there you see true. it. Yeah, yeah and that now was also sort of freezing things that you generally don't see, right? Okay. Are there any questions? Any other comments? No? Yes, I see three at once. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, it was the last exactly, moment to ask exactly. it. it was raining and now it's okay. <laughs> um, I guess that the um, question I have, um, I live in Venice and I, I was living in Venice since a few years, but in, when the Aqua Alta came I was in Spain uh, for a few months. And it was interesting that in my circle of friends everyone was stopping me to ask oh, what the fuck is going on there, why why does the Mosa do not work? and uh, is everything all right? Did any one of your friends die? And so on. Um, but it seemed like asking with a bit of exoticization somehow, like it's something that happens in Venice and here in, in Madrid specifically, uh, we're safe. But uh, a few weeks later, uh, big rain came and Madrid is very similar to Rome for many reasons and uh, a lot of uh, like downhill streets flooded like valleys and it was very, very bad. And in that moment, everyone was telling me, oh, now I, I see that it's not something only in Venice. It's like even here, it's in the middle of a desert, pretty much. Um, so I, was, I wanted to ask you if inquiring all this, these uh, problems that happen in Venice were highlighted in other places. Like, I, I guess that the tourism in Venice and Kyoto is very similar, or the rain that you were mentioning. And the other question which is related is that if you presented this uh, movie outside of Venice, in other places, uh, what was the reaction, basically? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is, it's, it's very interesting because uh, uh, two things. In general, all the films we made about the city, they have a, we have a problem to show the film in the same city because, uh, because uh, it's a very personal way of... Uh, watch things and watch uh, what is happening and uh, we we are not uh, trying to make a film about the city 
So the, the topic is not the city. So mm -hmm. when we show the film, uh, there's a lot of people say, ah, but you, you haven't seen this, you haven't seen that, or you, have, uh, you haven't filmed these things or that or that. But uh, in, in general, the, the, the big topic of the film is the struggle of the homo urbanus on the, so the, the men in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the city, in the human environment. So what to see what's the difference between all the city. And then normally we show these films all together in a kind of uh, um, installation where you, you can jump from one city to the other. So it's not really the city that is important, it's the, the comparison from the, all the, the, the different cities. But, Ven if the film in Venice, this one um, is interesting to show. Uh, so out uh, elsewhere is uh, incredibly um, powerful. This film because uh, even when you show something, people they don't know Venice and they they they, they see Venice in this condition is totally uh, is very strong. They, they say, "Wow, what is that?" But uh, what is interesting uh, to show in Venice. Also, with people that know very well Venice, so I'm uh, also interested about your what you think you because uh, we we know what is uh, to live with the water. Uh, and this. So if you know Venice, if you live in Venice, you know very well what is the Aqua Alta, and you know very well. But this was a, a little bit uh, an exception. For not a little bit, it was a big exception. And uh, even the the film is uh, a. a, a a, a little bit uh, repetitive, if you know, because if, if uh, I don't know if it's the, 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 the right uh, word, but uh, it's, it's a little bit just to, to, to show that uh, it was really complicated for, for everyone. It was, it was a, a very, very um, uh, complicated week. It was a week, but it was so long. It was so long, it was never finishing. When it finished, and never finishing. And uh, people from Venice, uh, I think that what they can, what I, I, I watched today, I watched the film as a Venetian, for example. So it, it, maybe the, your question is a, a question that I could ask to, to you. But uh, if I could ask this question to myself as a Venetian, <laughs> is uh, what I was surprised, it was a surprise like of, uh, of this, that is uh, in this film I see completely for me it's totally clear that uh, we live in a, in a, in in in, a, in another reality we live in a, Venice is uh, is not uh, is 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 a, yeah is a, is a fiction it's totally fiction we live in a fiction I think I always think that uh, what we see here as something normal but is not normal at all it's something totally uh, out of the world, it's out of the world because this city is something. After, it is, this is a city out of the world. It's just one city, is a total an exception. And when you put the water inside this, is what is it? Is a, is a, and and everything is uh, working. Everything is working. No, it's not. It's not stopped. Normally, as you said, when you have a, a, the, in some cities, uh, there's a, a flow, a flood like like this. Everything stopped. You everyone stay at home and outside. You have just uh, po po the police or the other other people. They are just going to save uh, people. Or there's the, the, the life is stopped totally. No, you can you imagine a, another city with another city with water like this. Everything stops. In, in Venice, no, the tourists are taught, is, are going to to take selfies and uh, and I think this could happen all in he, only here. Only, all in Venice. So, it could be interesting for a Venetian to watch this film to understand better in what kind of fiction we live every day. Okay, I'm afraid we are getting very short with time, but I saw there was another question at the very back. So, if if that is still the case, fine. Otherwise, I will just wrap up. Um, my uh, question is really to do uh, with the other side of what you've mentioned. So there have been a couple of elements. Um, so you mentioned uh, vulnerability. 
Um, and also, I mean, we've you've evoked the title of the of Queen of the Queen song, you know, kind of the show must go on. And of course, the part of that that goes with it is, you know, my makeup may be flaking. You know, you know kind of, I'm thinking about, you know, kind of the, the sense of you know what's inside. You know, kind of, um, and I just wanted to pick up on what has been mentioned about the the water as a lens for seeing vulnerabilities. So you know, you've talked in a very fully and, and in, a, in a sagely way about um, the, the comic side. And I, I was just uh, wondering whether you would like to dwell more on the kinds of vulnerabilities and injustices that the film makes visible. So um, th there were several shots of porters who were having to keep going about work, who were struggling in, and certain parts of the community who are in more difficulty perhaps um, and and saying so you know, the, the show is going on but at great personal cost to certain people who are not necessarily the tourists or not necessarily the, kind of the people who are enjoying the spectacle so what 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 systems are having to keep the spectacle going and how those people um, are being affected thank you yeah thank you it, it, it's, it's a complicated complicated question related to this film because uh, we are interested in vulnerability in, uh, in, in, the, in the urban environment, something that we are really, we are trying to enlighten uh, all the time because uh, I know that it's so, for, for us, it's so we create uh, the city, the city we create is not really the best place to, to live, but in this case, to go in very quick to the Injustice, the justice or injustice, and the, the, I think that uh, it's complicated to understand because uh, for me, it's uh, what is terrible is to treat the tourists in that in that way. But in in a sense, the tourists are here for the spectacle, so the show, and they show they are part of the show themselves. So in a way, when it, they take uh, they take a selfie, yeah, they, we are treating them very badly I, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm I'm sure of this I'm sure I say that we can, we cannot leave all these tourists with one vaporator that's passing every hour and they waiting on the on the water like this but in a sense they are also here to 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 watch this show and to also to act in the show and all the people that you are talking about that l work for this big show, they are also taking advantage of this show. So uh, I, I, I would say they are well paid for, <laughs> in a sense. I don't, I don't want to be too cynical, but uh, Venetian people, as you, I don't know if you live here, you know very well that it's a, it's a extremely uh, expensive city. So uh, people, they work here, they, they, they can, accept every kind of uh, uh, condition to work because that is extremely well paid. I'm not talking about people coming from uh, Mestre and uh, working on, 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 a, on a bar, but I'm, I'm talking about the owner of the, of the, of the restaurant of the bar. And uh, this is, they, are, they know that uh, Venice is a, a complicated city. There's a show you might, that has, must go on and you, you will be pay, well paid for this. So what is what for me is complicated is the guys that are with the, they are bringing the, the beer to the, the restaurant no this is this is uh, maybe complicated but all, all, everyone is like a going in uh, in a sense in uh, in the amusement park you 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 every, you don't understand what is real and what is fake in a sense because uh, yeah, I will say this for Venice: you you never know if uh, what is real, what is uh, real or fake, what is made for the show, and what what is not uh, and what is real. But for me, everything is like is like fake. No, what is what? Uh, everything is made for the for the for the economy uh, for the speculation. Yeah, uh, for the economy of the tourism, and the tourists want this. The tourists want, they don't want to be treated like this, but in a, in a sense, they, they, they also come here for this. 
So it's, it's a very complicated question. Maybe it, it needs a, a lot of time to answer to the, this question for, for, for Venice. For Venice, it's really complicated because, uh, as I told you, it's, uh, everything is uh, out of control. It it's, uh, escapes the rule that generally... Yeah, you, don't, you cannot judge Venice with uh, the same judgment yeah. that you have for the other city because, uh, it's, because it's a fiction. It's like uh, watching a, a film, a, a fictional film. You don't, but yes, okay, this is it's very violent, but it's fake. Okay, thank you very much for your, your questions. I'm afraid we really need to wrap up because I know you guys are busy with a uh, last keynote that it's basically about to start. So apologies for taking a little bit longer, but we wanted to really have this chat. So thank you for thank joining you so us. Thank, thank you. you so very much. And we will take advantage of the fact that you are also a new Venetian to yes. have you another Again. time uh, for another session and, yeah. Uh, yeah. and sharing with this with more students also. Thank you, everybody. Thank okay. you. Bye. Just stay Bye. here for the keynote, right? Yes, um, at six. So there, there will be, I suppose, like a couple of minutes break, and then it will be projected here.